Hello, it's Katie here. It's been a while. How are we all? So I've been playing with gouache for quite a while now and there's so, so many reasons why I love working with it and why I keep going back to it. So it's about time that I share with you my in-depth guide to how to work with gouache, what materials to start with, especially if you're new to it, and just some really good tips that you should know before you start. So what is gouache? Gouache is an opaque, water-soluble paint that dries with matte finish. It's different to watercolours because it has a lot of white pigment in and personally I don't recommend using it like watercolours and I'll explain why later on. If you're new to this type of paint or new to painting in general, you don't need to worry too much about what brand to choose because you need to focus on the technique first. The more expensive brands will be of better quality but there's a lot of cheaper brands out there as well that works really well so it's good to practice with some of those first. These are the paints that I've collected over the years and there's not a lot of logic to why I picked these brands specifically. I tend to just go with my budget so these are mainly low to mid range uh, paints in terms of price. The ones I use in most of my videos are the Memory Professional Gouache and the Boldmare Gouache and they're both priced between £5 to £10 a set. So they're really inexpensive and here's some results to show you how it looks. I have been told that both of these sets are quite hard to buy outside of the UK but I just want to stress that you don't need to spend a lot. There's pros and cons with these sets as well so once I'm done with these I'll likely just try a different affordable brand. So if there's any brands that you're curious about or you would like me to test then do feel free to mention it in the comments below. If I'm doing a painting as a gift or if you want to display them then it's worth spending a bit more. The Arteza set is really good to use, the colour selection is better and they do state how light sensitive each colour is. So I'm assuming that the colours won't change as much when exposed to light over time compared to the other sets. This set costs just under 20 quid, which is still a pretty fair price for the amount of paint that you get. And the other thing to bear in mind when choosing a set is to pick one that has a bigger colour range. Especially when you're using cheaper sets, the paint will lack in terms of pigment quality. So you will struggle to mix certain colours or there are just certain colours that you won't really get. So because of that, it would make your life a lot easier if you used a set that had 24 colours over one that has only about 12 or 6 in. For gouache, it's best to stick with synthetic brushes so you don't overload your brush with too much water. And likewise, you don't need to spend too much money on these, but it is handy to have some in a variety of shapes and sizes. So the ones that I use most often are these. We've got detailed brushes, pointed round brush, and flat brushes. It's also really handy to keep your old brushes as well, because these are useful for doing things like reactivating dried gouache, or say, cleaning your palettes, uh, just so you don't have to worry about damaging your nice brushes. Now in terms of paper, it really depends on how much water you like adding to your paint or say directly to the page because if you're only using like a little bit of water to your paint you can get away with using cartridge paper or gouache but if you want to do light washes or blend paint on the page then it's a lot better to use heavier papers like watercolour paper. Avoid thin papers like printer paper or sketchbooks made more for drawings because it's not really designed to hold water and would most likely tear or warp too much. And aside from paint palettes and the water part, it's really handy to have a cloth on the side, mini fan to help speed up the drying process and some washi tape as well to get that really satisfying straight edge around the whole painting. Peeling that tape off at the end might also be the most satisfying part of the whole process. And this part's really crucial to the process because if you want to use gouache effectively, you need to understand how much water to add to the paint and how this changes it. The paint is easier to use when you add water to it, but if you add too much, it can become too thin and transparent. I'll demonstrate this on some cartridge paper. I've drawn a line down the side with a Posca pen and a pencil as well, just to show you how the opacity changes. I'm also using two types of brushes to demonstrate how well the paint flows. I'm using memory gouache for this, and I'll start by using some straight from the tube, and then we'll gradually add more water. You can see that when it's straight out of the tube, it is quite thick, so you do need to add a bit of water to help it spread. 
and by a little bit of water I do mean wetting your brush very slightly and if need patting it on a cloth first before adding it to the paint especially when you're using just a small just a small drop of paint you really don't need much water but continue to do this and just test on the side as you go along you can see how by adding more and more water the paint flows better but also becomes more transparent if the paint is too thick it makes it tricky to paint fluid lines with when it's too thin it doesn't cover well so just continue to swatch the paint as you add small drops of water to find the consistency that you want to work with and towards the bottom I was adding a lot more water to the paint just to really thin it down just for demonstration purposes I've also noticed that the thickness of the paint can vary from brand to brand so just adjust accordingly depending on the type of paint you have when layering colours the general rule is to work from thin to thicker paint this way you can layer lighter colours on top of darker colours the underlayer needs to be completely dry for this and even though gouache dries really quick anyways I do like using a mini fan just to speed it up and note that this doesn't work the other way around so when you add thin paint on top of thicker paint it does become streaky if you add too much water to the paint or your brush becomes too wet then it can become patchy which is why it's really handy to just have that cloth on the side just to soak off any excess and also if you want a lighter colour you should always use white paint and not water to lighten it you can also blend colours on the page like in this quick gradient demo just working two colours back and forth with a brush and if you layer or place wet paint next to each other and just leave it, it will naturally bleed together and create some interesting textures. Here I'm experimenting by dabbing thin and thick paint next to each other. I anticipated it to be really patchy, but I really like how this turned out. So I would always recommend just playing around to see what textures and effects you can create. There isn't really a correct way of working with gouache, but it's more about understanding how you want to work with it. As I mentioned before, cartridge paper doesn't hold water well, so you can see how it's warped a lot in these areas, but over in this corner where the paint is quite thick, the paper is still relatively flat. Things to bear in mind as well is that dark colours dry lighter and light colours dry darker. I'll show you what I mean with this intense turquoise from Dallaroni. So I'll apply some paint and let it dry. Now I'm applying the exact same colour next to it, and you can see that the colour has lightened after it dried. The opposite happens with a light colour, the paint becomes darker once it dries. And a quick tip when mixing pale shades is to always start off with white and then just add tiny amounts of the colour to it, mix it and then test it first before adding more colour in. You'll save a lot of paint this way and you'll get the desired colour faster. Now that we've covered all the basics, I'll show you some examples of how I work with gouache. You can find the full process videos on my channel. And if this has been useful for you so far, then do subscribe below and you can give me a thumbs up for support as well. The best perk about gouache is that it's really forgiving. Because it's so opaque, you can easily correct and cover up as you go along. When I was painting Chihiro, I made a ton of mistakes. Like with the eyes, I must have repainted them about three times. But you really don't need to worry too much because you can easily just cover up and change it as you go along. With the background I built it up in layers instead of painting within lines and it was really easy to build up the flowers and the leaves in a natural looking way using this method. Unlike watercolours, layering with gouache is very straightforward and easy. And because gouache remains water soluble even when it's dried, I keep all the colours that I mix in the palette until the painting is complete. So you can reactivate the dried gouache with water as you go along and this way you wouldn't waste as much paint and also you don't need to worry about having to colour match or mix the same colour again later on. When I'm working on a bigger collection, I tend to mix more of my colours at the start, so then I can keep using them throughout the project. Even though the paint is incredibly dry and cracked here, if you add a few drops of water and work into it, it will go back to the original consistency. It's better if you let the water sit for a few minutes first before trying to mix it, and use an old brush as well so you don't damage your nice brushes. I definitely recommend just letting it soak for a while first and this way you don't need to mix it so much but once you've mixed it all up the paint is pretty much as good as it was before. I don't normally paint this way because it uses up a lot of paint 
Gouache is quite dense, so you can create texture this way. You don't necessarily need to layer thicker and thicker paint on top, like when I was painting the blossoms. As long as you don't dilute the paint too much, the paint will sit nicely on top. And an example of where I would dilute the paint more is where I do an underpainting first. Instead of sketching all the details, it's nice to lay out the composition by colour blocking, and then you can build up the layers and details after. Especially with an impressionistic style, it's better to go with quick judgement and loose quick brush strokes. Here I was working from thin to thicker paint and letting each layer dry completely before applying the next. Earlier when I mentioned how I wouldn't use gouache the same way as watercolours is because it doesn't give the same effect. Even though they have similar properties, if you dilute gouache too much it can end up looking dusty. Like here in this Ghibli painting, I wanted the sky and water to look sort of clear, so I diluted the paint a lot, but the finish is very speckled and not very polished. Even with the 300 GSM watercolour paper, the top layer kept breaking off as I was working into it. Whereas with my Princess Kaguya watercolour pieces, using the same paper, the light washes of watercolours look really soft and delicate, and the paper didn't really wear off. When it comes to storage, keep the paintings in a cool, dry place as water and moisture will damage it. If you're displaying them, it's fine if you frame it, but it's better if the paintings don't touch the glass directly, as it's easier for moisture and mould to build up if so. Also, you can get varnishes and waxes to cover the painting, but I've not explored those yet, but I'll fill you in when I do. Now this wraps up my guide to gouache and I hope you found this useful. The best approach is to be experimental and playful with it. With my work going forward, I want to explore texture and mark making more. So if you fancy seeing where this goes, then do subscribe below. And if you would like me to make more gouache videos, then do click the thumbs up button to let me know. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.